I would like to thank Apex Zeno for sending me this story, and this is more of an update, so the video won't be that long. If you remember, I did a video recently about Brock Turner and how he and his lawyers were trying to get an appeal to overturn his conviction of you know what he of the crime that he committed back in 2016 when he was involved with the rape of this woman behind a dumpster in which she was heavily intoxicated and they were trying to get the uh, they were trying to get the conviction overturned well i got some good news and it actually kind of shocked me the news is he lost his appeal to overturn the conviction so he will still be registered as a sex offender and he will still be known as the true rapist that we all know him to be the reason why it's so shocking is because this was a guy that should have gone to jail for a number of years and only went for three months. This is a guy that literally got a slap on the wrist for committing a, felon, a felonious crime, which is rape. And the fact that he tried to get this overturned, just, it made no, it made no sense, but we just knew it would get overturned, but I'm actually shocked, as you probably are, that they turned down his appeal. And they said, nope. You are going to stay right. You're going to stay in the same spot that you're in, and we're not going to overturn it. You're not going to get off the hook that easily. Let me go ahead and um, read this part right here. It says Brock Turner, the former Stanford swimmer convicted on three counts of sexually assaulting a woman in 2015, lost his appeal Wednesday, which was yesterday. Turner's case drew international attention in 2016 after Santa Clara County Superior Court Judge Aaron Aaron Persky sentenced. The former student to six months in county jail and critics condemned the sentence as a wrist slap. Stanford law professor Michelle Dauber gathered nearly 100,000 signatures in support of a ballot measure to recall Persky. And in June, he became the first California judge in 86 years to be voted out of office with 60 percent of the vote against him. Meanwhile, Turner tried to overturn the convictions, arguing there was no evidence to support them. In the appeal, the anonymous victim is identified as Jane Doe, although the world came to know her as Emily Doe during the sentence hearing two years ago when she read out loud a letter she written to Turner describing the depths to which his crime had affected her. According to court records, Doe was 22 and a recent college graduate on January 17, 2015, when she attended a fraternity party at Stanford with her younger sister and friends and had been drinking. Evidence introduced during the appeal, including taxi receipts and phone recordings, showed that the sister and friends lost track of Doe after midnight and went home. In the early hours of January 18, 2015, two Stanford graduate students identified as Carl A. and Peter J. approached the frat party on bikes. In a unit between a basketball court and a wooden shed, they told the court Peter J. saw someone on top of another person thrusting in a sexual manner. He asked, is everything all right here? He told the court. The person on top identified as Turner, who was then 19 and the Stanford freshman, stood up. Peter told the court that the woman on the ground seemed to sleep with her limbs spread out and her dress hiked up around her waist. Peter yelled, she's unconscious, and as Turner ran, Peter said he tackled the student and restrained Turner, restrained him. He testified that Turner smiled. In his appeal, Turner told the court that he had been drinking at the party and had danced with Doe and kissed her. He said he had invited her back to his dorm. She accepted. Outside, he said she fell and pulled him down with her. They laughed about it and kissed again. He testified that she agreed that he could touch her sexually with his hand, which he did after removing her clothes. Turner testified that Doe was unconscious, I'm sorry, was conscious and responsive to him the entire time and that he did not intend to rape her. In March 2016, Turner was convicted of, of assault with intent to commit rape, sexual penetration of an intoxicated person, and sexual penetration of an unconscious person. A three-judge panel at the 6th District Court of Appeal in San Jose unanimously upheld all three courts. In their opinion, the judges wrote that supporting evidence of Turner's intent included the fact that he had removed Doe's clothing, laid on top of her, ran when confronted, and then lied to police about running. Even though Turner was clothed and he was, when he was interrupted, the jury in 2016 could have reasonably concluded if the graduate student had not stopped him, he would have exposed himself and raped Doe, wrote Justice Franklin Elia, the author of the opinion. They also said it was clear that Doe was too drunk to give consent, noting Doe, 
Doe testified that she drank four shots of whiskey, a glass of champagne, three or four shots of vodka, and some beer in two hours' time. They said a voicemail from Doe corroborated that her speech was slurred and said her blood alcohol level taken that morning at 1.05 a.m. was at least 0.241%. The legal definition of impairment is 0.8%. Finally, the judges wrote that Turner himself testified that he had penetrated her with his finger. Asked to comment, Dauber, the law professor who spent two years crusading against the judge who sentenced Turner, said it was time for the former student to move on. Brock Turner is a lying, lying, unrepentant sex predator who never showed real remorse for sexual assault, she said. Turner never deserved the short misdemeanor sentence he received from Judge Persky, a sentence that sent the message that his crimes were not really serious. The appellate court has now rejected that idea. And by the way, that Judge Persky character, he has now since then been removed, as I they state in the article, uh, since that happened. They need to also check that dad out too, because I still can't get what he said out of his um what he said out of my mind when he said, I can't believe y'all want to send my son to jail for 20 minutes of pleasure. Okay. That lets me know what kind of shit his dad is on. So this shows right here that even his privilege didn't work for him. We two for two. Yesterday, I had to talk about that that so-called thoroughbred chick that she called herself a thoroughbred and thought because she was a white, quote-unquote, clean girl that she didn't deserve to be arrested for what she did. Now we have this. But don't get too comfortable because this is just a rare occasion. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. The links of the PayPal and Patreon are down below. I will talk to you in the next one.